the American Broadcasting Company presents Pat Novak for Hire. Sure, I'm Pat Novak for Hire. That's what the sign out in front of my office says, Pat Novak for Hire. It's about the only way to make a living down on the waterfront in San Francisco. Because if you ever tried to practice the Ten Commandments down here, they'd steal nine of them and frame you with the other. So I rent boats and do whatever else comes in handy to make a buck change pockets. Sometimes the hustle pays off. Sometimes you get lunch instead. Last week it was neither of these. I hung around my place at Pier 19 day after day and nothing turned up at all. Just when I began to wonder if people had forgotten how to phone, a babe gives me a jingle. She sounds nervous and talks about trouble. Ask me to come up and hold her hand. I end up at a joint on the marina slant of Webster Street. It was probably important stuff once in the way of gold-plated living. Now it's just a tired wooden boarding house with about 30 people filling up space designed for a dozen. The paint was peeling off the walls. The garden had been on its own so long it was beginning to look like a jungle. When I rang the doorbell, I'd have given even odds a zombie would open it. I was nearly right at that. It was Hellman... A detective from City Homicide with a disposition made up of equal parts of hating people and confusion. Right then, though, he wasn't himself. His fat face was wrapped in smiles. He looked like a cat who'd learned to open the icebox. Sorry, Novak, we don't want any fish today. You're being glad. Somebody must have broken their neck. You're wrong. Again, and as usual. Somebody had some sort of bad luck. As bad as you can get. Dead, huh? You're too late this time, Novak. The killer's already in the bag. And you got the drawstring. I'm not complaining. Now scamper off somewhere and find another sucker. Put the brush away, Hellman. If you got the killer, it's even money. It turns out to be four other people. I don't know. The department managed before you dragged into town. We stumbled, but we got by. You can say that about a wine bomb. I can make it fit you. Stumble on out of here, Novak. Yeah, yeah. But first, who done it? The landlady. She evicted a guy named Burke, the hardware. He didn't live here. He rented a room for some kind of an office. He was a freelance bookkeeper. She said he made too much noise working his machines at night. Did she confess? It's open and shut, Novak. No room for your chisel. Well, if she confessed, maybe you can pin it on her. What do you mean, pin it on her? The way you work, you couldn't prove Warren's governor. That's not my department, but keep on being smart and see if I can prove you'll fit in one of our cells down in Kearney Street. Don't strain your head, Hellman. I don't want any part of anything you're near, including this place. I'll buy that, too, and I'll breeze out of here. When the press shows up, don't worry about giving him your best profile. Either way, you'll look like a sack of potatoes. Either way, you'll look like a sack of potatoes. Gee, that's good, Novak. Before you tell Hellman that, you better go somewhere and grow a little. Look, Novak, how'd you like a tip on a horse? I got a hot one in the fifth at Del Mar tomorrow. I got a tip for you. Get out of my hair before I have to comb you out. Gee, Novak, that's no way to talk. I could be your friend. <laughs> The guy was small, even for a midget. Since the rooming house was so full of interesting people, I decided I didn't want to go away after all. So I went back up the steps. Was just going to try my luck when the door opens from inside. The guy with a welcome is either middle-aged or he's done a lot of careful living. His face is as smooth and as neat as a barrel full of apples. You notice it because he acts like he forgot his face when he went into his act. The rest of him is as mysterious as an attic in a B-horror picture. I didn't need any puzzles right then, so I started to brush him off. Especially when I noticed the suit. It was so ragged it looked like he was made up to put the bum on the town. But then I decided to play it for the last. How would you like to make some heavy money in a hurry? I quit buying oil wells. I'm not fooling, would you? Who are you? Name's Jack Lansom. I'm Burke's assistant, who used to be. Yeah, he looks like quick, easy money for an undertaker. For you, too. Sure, why not? And how? Burke has some papers in his home safe that I don't want poured over by any flatfoot snooper. They're my papers. Burke just kept them there for me. I want you to get them. I don't see any splints on your legs. I can walk, but I can't leave. Hellman's going to question all the tenants. So what do I do? Go to this address. It's on Knob Hill. Here are the keys. It's a wall safe, not a combination. 
Just two locks you have to open at the same time. The papers are in a sealed envelope marked Lansom Private. Get it and bring it here. I don't know. When a guy dies, the feds move in. They'll want to list his stuff for taxes. These aren't financial papers. They're just some private letters and things. I don't like flirting with the FBI. How would you like to flirt with 1,000 bucks? If the stuff's worth that much, it must be hot. I need those papers. Do you get them for me or do I phone somebody else? I could change my mind. Here's $100. There's 900 more when the stuff's in my hands. You had me fooled there. You don't dress to fit this kind of dough. So I save my money. Are you going or not? Give me the keys. Lots of luck, Novak. Hey, hey, Novak, wait a minute. About that horse, Go I... get a glass of water and drown yourself. <laughs> It looked like a cinch. I flagged the cab up to the place on Knob Hill. It turned out to be one of those society page joints, all glass, brick, and snobby's doorman. Getting up to Burke's floor was as easy as walking up six flights of back stairs. The hall was empty and the key fitted. It was all so easy I began to get nervous. And you would, too, if you walked in on her that way. She was a toy-sized brunette with a perfect kind of face that could mean anything from nice people to quick death. She was smooth and beautiful. That you could say that about a whirlpool. If my breaking in bothered her, you'd never guess it from looking. Oh, hello. Toss your hat on a chair. I've been working the wrong districts. I'm glad you're here. Why, for instance? Hmm, girl gets lonely in a place like this. A uh, Berkey's out, and I don't know when he'll get back. You forgot something there. Folks call me Blanche. What's your name, friend? Pat Novak. Uh, you go with the lease? I'm, uh, in and out. Berkey doesn't like me to tell it, though, but everybody knows it, so uh, what kind of secret's that? Didn't I surprise you when I walked in like that? Mm-mm. Berkey has a lot of friends. They come and go. I'm used to it. For a bookkeeper, Berkey does all right. He's uh, good at figures, don't you think? If he had my account, I'd be nervous. Mm, don't you know? He just came into a lot of money. Oh, but that's a comfort to his clients. Oh, to me, too. Have a cigarette. There's some in the box there on the coffee table. Mm. Well, these are cigars. Oh, Oh, yeah, well, uh, I have some in my purse. Never mind. I'll settle for a drink. Okay. Well, let be. What do you got? Mm, that's kind of hard to say offhand. Uh, let's look in the kitchen and see. Mm-hmm. Hmm, it ought to be up here. But it isn't. I knew a girl that way once. <laughs> Berkey must have moved the bottles. Uh, look around. Uh, try those cabinets. Oh, I'll get there. Hey, wait a minute. Take it easy. What's the matter? Jumpy. Good evening, Miss. Is Mr. Novak in? Yeah, I'm in. You and your horse are both out. But Mr. Novak, it's a good horse. You always come and cry? Yeah, that's Pinky. He's been on my tail all night. Aren't you curious about why I'm here? Hmm. You must be a friend of Burke's. Would it matter? What do you mean? When you get tired of playing with those doors, let's admit you don't know where Burke keeps his boots. I... You don't know where he keeps his cigarettes. You don't know anything about the place because this is the first time you've been here. You're acting like a detective. Put it down, I'm just curious. And you can still fill in my question. Why not say I, uh, wandered into the wrong apartment? You don't seem anxious to get out. Maybe I like the company here. Come on in the living room. He probably has the liquor in there. That isn't what you were after. Why don't we settle for my being lonely? The town's full of lonely babes. None of them look like you. I know a cure. Do you? Let me guess. Well, I guess when you can be sure. Like this. Now I know. Fill me in on the rest of your visit. Huh. I'm busy. Or, uh, I could be. All right, let's close the post office. Did you get the papers? I could soak. Men don't usually treat me that way. They'd live longer if they did. Look, baby... I'm not swinging any bats until I know who's pitching. Do you give with where you fit in, or do I have to bend it out of you? <laughs> you know, I think I could like you. A dame gets tired of men she can twist around her fingers. Yeah, sure. I'm fascinating. Give. Don't flex your muscles. I'll tell you. Denver Red sent me. You're sure it wasn't Pittsburgh Pete or Chicago Clark? Uh-uh. He's real. If you aren't too particular about what you call a man. He owns a nightclub called the Knife and Fork out on Geary Street. Mm, then what? He sent me to get some papers Burke has hidden around the place. A small envelope. Did you find it? Sure. 
Here it is. Do you want it? You give up easy. I don't have to do this sort of thing to get along. I told Red that. What else are you going to tell him? I'll tell him you took the papers away from me. Unless you got a better idea. Put down your flap, sister. What if I didn't go back to him? What if I went with you? Uh Uh-uh. I don't like your recommendations. Don't worry. I won't pretend I wouldn't drop you as soon as I found a better man. What do you want? Eternity? I haven't got time for that. All right, sucker. So, I'll go back to Red. He tears telephone books in half and things like that, so uh, watch him. I'll try to manage them. Ah, here's the booze. Let's drink to something or other. Why not? You sure you won't change your mind about anything? Why don't you leave me your phone number? I got a better idea. Sucker. She timed it, but nice. I hardly started to get my hand up before she hit me with a bottle. The room began to spin and I tried to stand up, but my knees gave way. I could hear her footsteps a long distance away, running. Then the door closed. I shook my head and some of the cobwebs went away, but not enough for me to get started. By the time they did, I knew it was too late. I looked around and the package of papers was gone. Yeah, the more I thought of how easily I'd been done in by that dame, the matter I got. Then I remembered no one was supposed to know about the papers except Lansom. I decided I'd better check on the play. I got on the phone and talked my way through a flock of bars until I ran down an alcoholic friend of mine named Jocko Madigan. He's an old-timer around San Francisco who knows more about the town than the city planning commission. He sounded good over the phone, which must have meant they were watering his drinks. Patsy, my boy, how are you? Curious. I'm sitting in on a racket that's beginning to develop too many curves. You sound like you're in a Girl Scout camp. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, you nasty, immoral and Put down the horn for a minute. I want you to do me a favor. If I had a daughter and you were even in the neighborhood, I'd lock her in the cellar. I can't imagine what those Boy Scout leaders are thinking about. They were Girl Scouts a minute ago. What did they do, pull a switch? Anyway, Boy Scouts don't camp, they hike. Look, I just got sapped by a dame who stole some papers. Uh, they, uh, up Mount Tam- Tamil Pius, they hike. That's her name's Blanche. Know. She's tied in with a guy named Denver Wren. He runs the Knife and Fork Club out on Geary. Oh, those poor kids. And that mountain's almost straight up, too. She man. just left it's... here. She ought to be heading for Denver Red's place. What are the papers? I know you don't own them. You, you can't read. They have some stuff in them that'll put the heat on a guy named Jack Lansom. He likes it cool. A thousand dollars worth. Oh, uh, speaking of money, there's a friend of yours here. Hello, Patsy. This is Pinky. Imagine me talking to you on the telephone. Imagine I've gone deaf. Hey, Jocko, if you can hear this, pull that punk off the line. Okay, he's gone. He said he had a horse for you. Look, dummy up to that guy. He's been floating around all night. And I'd be floating, too, if you'd be nice to him. I'll grab a cab and go out to the Knife and Fork Club. When Blanche shows up, see if you can find out what she does with the papers. Are you buying the drinks and the cab fare? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you going to do? I'm going back and see Lansom. This was supposed to be a closed deal. And will you hurry? The dame will be there and gone. Don't worry about me. You couldn't keep me away from the place. I'm growing wings. Yeah? Why the sudden lather? Well, if you're buying the drinks, there's no use my scrimping. I'm suddenly developing an awful longing for some good, well-aged scotch. So long, lover. <laughs> I ducked out of the place and started along the street looking for a cab. It was growing foggy and I couldn't see very well. In fact, I could see so little I didn't notice the car drive up. I could hear the driver all right. All right, Bob, inside the car. You must not like arguments. Don't think it won't shoot either. Get in. You're a Patsy Novak, ain't you? You can say Patsy twice. Don't sulk. I'm doing you a favor. Yeah, thanks for the ride. I'm Reynolds. Gong Reynolds. Ever hear of me? Yeah. You sell pipe dreams. If you know that much, you know that shoveling the snow ain't no job for a preacher. So you're tough. Then what? Then you give me Burke's little envelope. What is this? A mass meeting? You pass it over or do we have to go out in the country and get it twisted out of you? You're wrong twice. I haven't got it. You must think I'm foolish. Someone beat me to it. Who, Murphy? Murphy. Yeah, the bookie. Did he get it? A dame. She said she was working for Denver Red. Out at the knife and fork? Well, that sounds all right. Hey, what's up? You don't know? Uh-uh. I was hired to pick it up. 
Yeah, sure. Yeah, I believe that. Take it or leave it, but let me out of here. Don't get nervous. Wait till we hit a quiet street. I'm broad-minded. Let me off anywhere. I said a quiet street. Before you go, I'm going to search you. How do I know you ain't lying? I'm beginning to wonder myself. (laughs) Reynolds was a nice guy for an opium peddler. No bumps, no scars. He even dropped me near a car line. Pretty soon I began to breathe regularly again and headed back to the place on Webster Street. The house was dark except for a light in one of the upstairs windows. Just as I was leaning on the bell, I hear someone coming up the steps behind me. I wish you'd stay put, Mr. Novak. Now, about that horse. He's a beautiful animal. Affectionate. Look, I'm tired of this shadow act. What's your pitch? Straight over the plate, Novak. I'm doing you a favor. Eh, someday I may need one from you. I'm far-sighted. Well, I'm near-sighted. Come here. Hey, Light up and be somebody. What's your ragged? Oh, put me down, Novak. I, I got connections. You, you, you can't scare me. Uh, I can try. Going in for kidnapping midgets, Novak? Put him down and come on in. I don't want to draw a crowd. Make this the last time I see you, Pinky, or I'll fix it so you wish you had. Who was that? I don't know. I'm beginning to get curious. Forget it. You get the envelope? No. Don't sound so cheerful. Why not? Somebody changed my mind. Too much competition. Keep it understandable. What do you mean? Every tough monkey in town is after those papers, and Denver Red has the inside track. Who else? Tell me about the others. Why didn't you tell me? I didn't know about them. Uh, I know how you feel. I didn't know a lot of things either, but I'm beginning to learn. Start talking. Burke used to keep books for a lot of guys around town. That's where he really got his money, covering up the racket profits from the revenue boys. Don't stop there. That's all I know. That's not enough. All right, all right. I don't know, but I can guess. Burke must have photostats of some of the records and use them to blackmail the gangsters. So it's a free-for-all with me in the middle. I didn't know about it. Honest, I didn't. You didn't know, but I get slapped, sapped, and held up. Good for me. You say Denver Red got the papers? And he can have them. I'm bowing out. Your hundred dollars is nothing, don't you see? Get the papers and we'll both be rich. Richer than anyone in town. No dice. You want them, you get them. I'll give you... I'll give you five thousand dollars. How much down? Here's the rest of the thousand I promised you. Is that fair? Fair enough. We're going to be rich, you hear? Rich. Yeah. The richest men in the cemetery. Lansom must have thought I was the biggest sucker in the city. I was through with the papers as soon as I discovered how hot they were. I could have told him, but when I saw how anxious he was, I figured I might as well use his shakes to get the rest of the thousand dollars. I headed out to the knife and fork, but my only plan was to get Jocko off the hook. After that, I wanted a lot of time in the country until things cooled off. The joint was out near Golden Gate Park, one of those community center places where you get everything that'll go in a stomach, including bicarbonate. The brunette doll was nowhere in sight, but I saw Jocko over at the bar wrestling with a double-sized highball, eased over beside him. Well, if it isn't the Boy Scout, Patsy Novak. That stuff's beginning to eat into your head, Jocko. Don't you worry. My lobes are functioning smooth as ice in a glass. What can I do for you uh, after you pay the bill? Did the Dame Blanche show up here? Yeah, about half hour ago. What kept you? She's pretty. Mm, So's a tiger. Where is she? She and your friend Denver Red went upstairs. He has an apartment up there. Now, that's the way to live. If he bored a hole in the floor and ran a pipe down to the bar... Did you see the papers? No, and do you know a guy named Reynolds, Gong Reynolds? We've met. He was in here. He looked around and ducked out. Did he go upstairs? I don't know. You're running in big company. Reynolds and Denver Red are two of the most powerful gangsters in town. If they've got anything to do with this, you better cash in your chips and get out of the game. Yeah, don't worry. I'm all washed up with this. I heard something else, too. This guy, Lanson, is no country boy, either. Measure him for me. The grapevine has it. He used to be a member of Murder Incorporated, the Brooklyn outfit. He got out before they grew into big-time operators. Uh, Three of a kind. What do you know about Murphy? Don't tell me Murphy's in on this. Murphy's got the horse wires sewed up. He sewed it up with bullets. Let's get out of here. Yeah, I will in a minute. How do you get to Denver Red Shack? The entrance is outside, but what do you care? Let's get out of here. In a minute. Patsy, they're hotter than summer in Panama. Leave them alone. I'd kind of like to see that envelope. Try the post office. It's full of envelopes. Yeah, not this one. You coming with me? No, Patsy. If you've lost your mind, you've lost it alone. I'm beginning to wonder about that. Well, so long, lover. (laughs) 
I worked out of the place without causing any fuss. Eased into the apartment entrance. The place was quiet. It was so quiet you could hear me breathing as I worked my way up the stairs. There was a carpet in the halls, but even then I was careful. I listened at the door and there wasn't a sound inside. After a while I tried to knob. The door opened. With a fog outside you could barely make out anything in the place. Something told me to back out and forget it. There was something I wanted to know. I held my breath and listened. All I could hear was the jukebox faintly from the cafe below. And I felt for the light switch. Don't move. You're covered. What are you waiting for, Hellman? The payoff? You, baby. Keep your hands up. Where's the gun? I ate it. I guess it wasn't much good at that. You didn't have any bullets left. You counted them? I counted the bullets in the body. Six bullets, one load. Who got it? Or do I have to guess? Denver Redden is Dame. Name's Blanche. Know her? Yeah, I know her. She used to row stroke oar in my lifeboat. She looks the type. You want to tell me about it, or do we go downtown first? I didn't kill him, Helen. Who made those holes in him? Termites? If they did, you better keep your hat on. They might get hungry again. You got all the brains, Novak. You better shake them up. You're going to need them. You ought to get a refund on that crystal ball, Helen. That's not a bad idea. Or maybe I can swap it for a television set. I'd like to see you on those San Quentin broadcasts. You saw me come in, you fathead. You can't pin this one on me. It's pin, Novak, but good. In fact, it's a hat pin. Try making sense. Try making this not fit your head. This is my hat. Now all you got to do is get rid of the five people who saw you wearing it earlier this evening at the boarding house. And you're clear. We were halfway down to the Hall of Justice before I could talk Hellman into giving me another chance. Murphy was really the one who sensed it. I picked him up by phone at one of his bookie joints with Hellman listening in on an extension. Yeah, it was short and sweet. Novak? Yeah, I've heard the name. What's it in you? This may not be my business, but I got a good reason for wanting to know. Spread it out, Novak. I got work to do. Did you get a phone call tonight about an envelope with some photostatic copies of a bunch of records? What's it to you, Novak? Yeah, you did then. Yeah, some nut, I guess. Didn't give his name. Town's full of them these days. He wouldn't be a nut if Burke had something on you. Hey, what is this? Burke's got nothing on me. I pay my taxes. What is this, Novak? Some new form of shakedown? Yeah, Murphy. But you're not up the tree. Thanks a lot. Hey, it could fit. Did I get a chance to prove it? I can't let you go, Novak. But what if I should bend over for a minute to pick up this pencil and the door open and all? Try it and see, Helen. Just once. <laughs> After that, I began to figure my bad luck had run out for the day. I jumped a cab and went down to the waterfront, but not to my pier. There was a guy at Pier 23 who was a friend of mine. He had a gun and a rowboat, and I borrowed both of them. I pushed off without being too careful, because between the wind and the cross chop, nobody was going to be hearing anything. Even with everything on my side, it was a long, hard row. When I hit the bottom of the ladder at the end of Pier 19, I had to sit in the boat to let my heart slow down. It was blacker the inside of Hellman's dress shoes. I took my time edging down the pier. I was just about to slide into my boathouse when I tripped the booby trap. I did a Brody, and somewhere along the line, I lost my gun, which put me even up with Lawson. He turned on the lights. Novak, you have to sneak up in your own office. You ought to pay the rent regular. I see the gags. You fix up this welcome? I was all alone and didn't like the idea of being caught from behind. Uh, What would you do about a frontal attack? I've got this gun. But since it's only you, I don't have to worry. I wouldn't say that. I think you've got all kinds of worries. Everybody has got something. And you've got Reynolds. Where is he? Take it easy. I just saw him earlier tonight and he mentioned your name. Let's keep that for the society column. I'll take the envelope. I didn't get it for the simple reason that there isn't any envelope. That fall on the head make it soft? You told me you saw it. Nothing important. Just some regular business letters. Nothing to stand up in court. I still don't understand this. You don't make sense. And I don't make dough either. I don't have the envelope. Or do you want to search me? I'm not getting that close to you. You've gone off on some tangent that I don't understand. So we'll just sit and wait till you get ready. Or until Reynolds gets here. That's supposed to scare me. Look at it this way. 
You don't mind if I talk? I can listen. No, you sit there, with your back to the door. That's right. Now, I'll just warm the place up by closing the door. Now, you were saying? Suppose that the envelope was a phony. After I am on my way, you call up all the big-time hoods in town and tip them off. Now, tell me why. The boys start pouring out of the woodwork to give me the business. The ones who chase me are the boys on Burke's list. Then you can pick up where he left off. I'm not boring you, am I? Not at all. Go on. Everything was as cozy as an upper berth until Denver Red gets his girl into Burke's place before I make it. You're everything but consistent. Now you'll be trying to tag me with the stiffs down at the knife and fork. Thanks for the cue. You knew that if Denver Red spotted the envelope for a phony, the news would be all over town and your racket would be kaput, so you killed him. Nice figuring. You should have been a bookkeeper, too. You even told me to come down here so you could kill me if that planted hat didn't frame for the cops. I hate to disappoint you. So, since you know everything else, you might as well know the caliber of this gun. See? I've looked into things like that before. Everything has to end sometimes, so... Don't touch that phone. I ordered that call, just in case. I said don't touch it. You'll be hearing worse bells than that if you don't let me answer it. Okay, but watch your language. Novak speaking. For a minute, I thought you was out. You're the hottest man to get hold of. But I guess it's because you're a busy guy. Well, say something. That's right, Reynolds. Huh? This is Pinky, Mr. Novak, remember? Pinky Punk. What a name. That's up to you, Reynolds. What's he saying? You want to talk to him? You still there, Mr. Novak? And Mr. Novak... Give me that phone. Now, look, Reynolds. I'm not taking any talk off you. You pay up or else... Yeah. How about that horse? You want to get onto him? I think I can toss a sawbuck into his feed bag. Oh, gee, Mr. Novak, you'll never regret it. Okay, Pinky. Who's the goat? Pinky, I said, what's his name? Gee, Mr. Novak. <laughs> what do you know? I forgot. <laughs> I think he might have forgotten, but Lansom's memory was good. I handcuffed him to the chair and told him Reynolds would be down in a half an hour. Then gave him Hellman's phone number. He confessed to everything after sitting alone in my office for a while. I know how he felt. When the feds got the news, they moved in with a fine tooth comb, but they never did turn up anything. Nobody ever did. I'm pretty sure of that. But now and then I get the idea maybe I'm wrong. So I start nosing around for those papers. I never find the things. I usually find Reynolds instead. He's beginning to get gray. Who killed the bookkeeper? That was the landlady. Yeah. Hellman got her a room, too. Heard on tonight's presentation were Ben Morris as Novak, John Galbraith as Inspector Hellman, Jack Lewis as Jocko, and Mary Milford as Blanche, with Herb Ellis, Jerry Zinneman, Kurt Martell, and Dick Ellers. Special music by Otto Clare. Listen again next week at this same time when over most of these stations, the American Broadcasting Company presents Pat Novak for Hire. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.